Alrighty folks, hope you're doing well. We're going to dive into and do a speedy lesson in Blender 2.93 on texturing. So what I want to go ahead and start with is the default scene here where we have a cube and just remembering our navigation, scrolling in with wheels and uh, scrolling out, holding shift key to move around and zoom in. Uh, we can use the G key to move our cube or for example, control Z to undo, and it might be useful to uh, actually hit tab to go into edit mode, and then one, two, and three to select different uh, modes once we're in edit mode for our edges, face selection, and so on. So just a few reminders on some things that we've learned previously, and let's go ahead and dive into materials here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead into the shading tab here. And what you're gonna see is a graph here that's controlling how our cube is rendered. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disappear for a moment, just so you can see. And there's a few properties that we can change, like the base color, for example, of our cube here. Uh, and I think that's pretty interesting because then we can you know, render different cubes or whatever, but we probably wanna do something more interesting and that is use a material. So what are we gonna need? Well, we're gonna need some material here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just download one of these images here uh, that I found that's available here and something that's cube-like, uh, perhaps this image here that I'll want to lay on top of the cube. So let me go ahead and uh, save this image. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the home folder and just call it cube PNG. Okay, so I'll get rid of this here and let's go ahead and find that material now in our home directory where I've downloaded it. So we should have, um, might need to refresh this, um, but cube PNG here, here it is. And I'll just go ahead and drag and drop that as a new node here. You'll see that I have this material here, again with this file here, and it has a color. So if I actually connect this color to our base color, you'll notice that this changes here. And now we're using this material or this image that I've loaded from my hard drive onto our cube here. Now it doesn't look quite right in the sense that it's a little bit scattered all over the place. So for instance, if we just wanted to apply some simple texture, so for example, sometimes in a game you might have an asset and might want to make this cube represent a crate, you could go to images, download one of these um, pieces of wood here, and let's go ahead and just save this as you know, test. And go ahead and give this a refresh here. Scroll down here, bring in another material, and instead connect this as our base color. And maybe this is satisfactory for your needs here, uh, and we don't need to add a lot of detail. I will add that we probably do want to use, again, seamless textures and so on, uh, but let's go ahead and just remove this. I'm going to delete this material here and add our cube texture here. Because ultimately, what we want to figure out how to do is how to unwrap this cube such that we can figure out the components or the proper texture coordinates for each of these faces here. And if you want to learn a little bit more about this, the Wikipedia page is excellent on UV mapping, but uh, this is the general idea here that we're trying to figure out how do I parameterize or take some 2D surface and wrap it on a 3D surface? Or you could think of this as the opposite. Uh, process here. So that's ultimately what we want to do. And there's a nice representation of this for a cube. And you can imagine unwrapping or dropping down the flaps of this box and pasting the texture so that we get the image appropriately on each of these faces here. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we have a UV editing tab here that we can click on. And you're immediately going to see that the material here, the cube image, has been applied here. Now, how do I map the actual geometry to these faces here? Well, I've got to select the geometry here. Uh, and only the geometry that I select, you'll notice, shows up in the UV editing window on my left side here. So I probably want to select all this geometry here. I can do this in the transparency mode or select one face and hit uh, shift uh, and the plus key to uh, grow my selection here. Let's see if it'll cooperate with me. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Well, it's not growing. Anyway, just select all the geometry and you'll see it's applied here. Now that I have all the geometry in my window, I can start transforming it. So for example, I can move 
uh, the geometry around here. Um, I can use my other shortcuts I learned like G to do that or S to perhaps scale the geometry. And what I'm going to do is just change these UVs um, or the mapping to line up with our cube here. Now I might want to see this in progress. I'm going to go ahead and um, select my viewport shading so that I can get a material preview here. And you'll see as I uh, select things in the UV window and update them that they're being updated on the cube here. So let me just kind of line things up here uh, the best I can. Uh, you'll notice this image is actually uh, twisted, so I could do a rotation here uh, and try to sort of rotate things. Uh, and let me go ahead and try something like that. Uh, I'm just going to type in uh, 90 for my rotate. Let's see. Let me undo here. Uh, start doing the rotation that's at 90. Um, actually, I want to do it about 270. There we are. Uh, hit the G key to kind of line things up. I'm going to scale it just a little bit here. Uh, and then I might have to do a little bit more precision uh, tuning here. Uh, and the same keys apply. I can hit one, two, or three and select different uh, edges here. I'm going to select one here, uh, the G key. And I'm just going to kind of drag things around here. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm just going to get it close enough for this uh, tutorial because uh, some of the things that I want to uh, show you here too is we have to be a little bit careful with our UV mapping process, meaning that we can have uh, distortion if I decide, hey, I'm going to make this polygon much larger in the UV map, um, you know, something kind of wild like this. Um, so let's go ahead and see how that's getting distorted here. And, and you can kind of think of this in terms of the actual geometry of this shape, the surface area of this part of the cube here um, should be, you know, proportional to the amount that it gets in the UV map. Um, I don't know if that's going to make 100% um, sense to you, but again, we try to make these proportional. So I'm just going to line this up uh, the best that I can um, with this uh, texture using uh, the G key, um, and then we will uh, export this out so you can see things. So again, it might be useful to select all the geometry or just um, some of it here. Let me go ahead and just select everything um, and just continue um, manipulating geometry here. Hit the G key and just move things into place here um, very, very slowly. Hit one, select just one of these vertices. Here we are. We can use our tools to sort of flatten things and move them around if we need to. Um, but this will give us a good enough approximation um, for the purpose of this uh, lesson here. Um, now you'll notice uh, here, let's go ahead and just finish this off here. It looks like I have a little bit of extra uh, geometry here. Um, so that's kind of uh, interesting uh, with the uh, unmapping. Um, so let's see what that turns our final uh, shape to. So if I go ahead and scroll around here, um, I've roughly got my cube here, the bottom right side, and I'm going to hit on my, uh, if you have a, a num key here, one, two, three, four, you know, you can kind of do a quick scroll around here. Um, so this is an okay UV mapping. You'll see that left actually does not correspond with the front uh, in Blender, but it might be the actual front for you. So. Anyway, this is um, good enough from the free texture that I found, and you'll have some idea of how to UV map stuff. Um, and again, you can see here we don't have a really tight edge here, so we might want to go um, and clean that up here uh, on this side. Uh, just, you know, one sort of vertex maybe at a time here, uh, and we can sort of line things up here. Now, what can happen too is if you overstep your bounds here, like for this particular shape, um, that's that's no good either. So you can see how this kind of gets stretched and uh, we end up repeating part of the texture. But sometimes you might want to repeat to sort of save or optimize how much of the actual texture space you have. Um, and that's okay, but it, this was not our intent. So I'm going to do Control Z uh, a couple of times here. Um, and we'll see that this is, you know, close enough of a map here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just export out this uh, model here. Uh, I'm going to do it in wavefront form here. Uh, I want to get rid of, uh, or actually export all the uh, materials here. Uh, let me just call this cube. I'll export it here. And let's go ahead and look at that file. 
And I've gone ahead and found my uh, text file here. I just called it untitled object and untitled uh, material file. Uh, this may or may not be interesting for folks to see, but uh, this is my uh, cube, which matches what I exported out of here from Blender. Um, uh, let me bring that up. And you can see the actual geometry. And these are the vertex texture or the sort of 2D points. So they're normalized between values of zero and one, but uh, there's some vertex texture coordinate here at you know 0 0.5, 0 0.7. So that's you know maybe somewhere down here that represents you know perhaps this uh, particular vertex here. Okay, so it's kind of interesting to think about. Uh, graphics students um, may be interested in knowing that. Uh, and then you'll usually have a materials file, at least for the object format, and you can locate that texture material here. And this might be useful for artists who are debugging later on and saying, hey, um, I did the UV mapping, but I can't find my material. You can usually open up these different uh, file formats, uh, depending on what you're exporting, and try to find that actual texture. So anyway, I'll leave this with you here, and I think that's a good uh, exercise to sort of practice with UV mapping. Um, now, the one uh, additional thing I should actually do um, is to show you the um, sort of default uh, object here. So let me go back in the layout, delete this uh, object here, um, and just create a new uh, cube here. Uh, and again, if I go into UV editing, you'll notice it's already laid out in a nice uh, projection for me. So if I go to UV, um, I can actually unwrap it in different uh, ways here. And it's actually done sort of a smart unwrapping. Now, how did this um, come by? Well, the basic art or the basic technique here, uh, let me make sure I select everything, is that you can uh, mark seams. So you'll go in the edge mode and clear all the seams here. And then if I try to uh, unwrap, there's going to be no seams here. Actually, it says it's just failing down here. Um, so let me just show an example of marking some of the seams here, which are basically cuts along different edges here um, that I'm going to extract uh, from this shape here. So let me uh, mark this as a seam here. Uh, and then let's see what happens if I, uh, and again, let me select this whole shape. Sometimes it's easier to see um, in the transparent mode, the seams here uh, that are highlighted in red. But again, I'll highlight this. Uh, and now I'm going to do a new unwrapping. And it's going to be using my seams here uh, that I have here. Uh, so UV, unwrap, and this is what we get here. So you'll see we have this nice um, shape here. Right? If I go into the edge mode, uh, let me select everything. Uh, that's just right here that I've sort of cut out because that's where I marked my seams here. And Blender will do you know, the most intelligent thing that it can try to do. It'll try to, again, project this 3D shape onto a 2D image. Um, so you can see how the vertices got a little bit um, unwound here. So let me just mark some other seams here. I'm going to need two to go into the edge uh, select mode, uh, select these edges, and uh, mark the seams here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and mark uh, this seam here. Um, and uh, let me mark this, this seam as well here, just a few of these. It takes a little bit of uh, practice, but you can think of these, again, as sort of cuts. Um, so if the shape was going to sort of fall flat, um, that's what would happen. So let me just do a uh, unwrap here, uh, and we'll see once I select everything <laughs> what we get here. Um, so it's so actually not much changed here. Um, just make sure I did it. There we go. Uh, now it's actually unwrapped uh, the shape here. And now you can see that I have the uh, six individual boxes. So if I go into face mode or hit three, select one of these, G to move, I can sort of move these freely and place these over my texture. So let me do that one more time uh, just to make this clear. Um, we've got to go into our shading uh, wherever I had um, this uh, cube thing. Um, and again, it looks like I don't have my material, um, so I've got to add one there. Sometimes it uh, goes away or whatever. Uh, I've got my cube here uh, and back to UV editing mode. And I could, uh, this time, let's actually find the front I hit one for my uh, orthographic view. Uh, I'm going to select this in the uh, face mode here. Oh, there we go. One here. Oops. Uh, this actual face here. Let me get rid of the transparency. Uh, and this is the front. Uh, so in my UV mode, I'll select with uh, G here. And I'm just going to line this up on the front here. Uh, and maybe I want to scale this. 
Now, because I know all these shapes are actually the same size, uh, just another word of warning here. Uh, let me select everything. I'm going to do some operation like a scale. I should apply it to um, all of them um, equally, right? Because they're all supposed to be proportional in uh, shape and size. <laughs> Again, uh, as you do more UV mapping, you will, um, you know, uncover some of these things here. Um, you know, these, these little tricks here. But let me just get it close enough here um, and then um, show in our actual preview here. That's the option here, viewport shading, uh, the frontier. Now it's flipped upside down. So uh, what could I do here? Well, what if I uh, rotated this? Again, 180 degrees here, 180. Okay, so you do have to be a little bit careful about your alignment. Again, some of these tricks that you're going to learn with UV mapping, but hopefully this um, shows you the idea of marking seams, uh, unwrapping things, uh, and just how to use the uh, shading material editor, uh, UV editor, and so on. Uh, one last, last final feature, <laughs> because I'm excited about this, is uh, again, you can use the UV unwrap to do different projections too, if you're just in a hurry. Um, so you can play around with some of these and just see uh, a cube projection. So this is going to get rid of my um, sort of seams here and just project this thing as a, a cube here, uh, the actual shape here. So you can select everything uh, you want, all the geometry to see how this was done. Um, if you were trying to project a shape um, or get a spherical projection, get something like this um, and so on. So you can play around with some of these things. Um, Blender does have pretty good smart unwraps here. Uh, again, if I do that, you know, it'll figure out how to just get all the geometry and wrap it into a, you know, reasonable enough shape. Then you can play around with the geometry, you know, if you're in a really hurry. Anyway, I'm going to leave the video there for you folks. I hope you enjoyed this one and now know how to uh, apply textures and do some st cool stuff with unwrapping.